Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are live in Cologne, and we are ready to head into our next matchup. It is going to be Fnatic facing off against the Copenhagen Wolves, and this is a rematch from Super Week where the Copenhagen Wolves took the win to give them an advantage in the head-to-head, -head, which is 2-1. Yesterday, though, we saw Fnatic give a confident performance against Rocket by closing out the game with ease, which kept them in contact with the other top four teams. Yeah, Fnatic, they, they weren't controlled the entire game, and they never gave Rocket a chance to make a comeback. And everyone, they played well, and while the start of the game was a bit slow, Fnatic they just really turned on the power when it came to team fights and controlling all the objectives. And Rocket, they were running this combo with Lee Sin and Yasuo, which Fnatic just perfectly managed to shut down in every single team fight. And coming into this game, their confidence is very high. They can be very proud of their performance at the Intel Extreme Masters. And with the win yesterday, things are looking very good for Fnatic. You see them making a lot more plays now, which they didn't actually do during the losing streak. And that has mostly been due to XPEC, actually. His Gragas yesterday was great and a constant threat with his ulti into Q combo. And also we saw him performing on LeBlanc at IEM. So the Copenhagen Wolves, they really need to respect him. And you could argue that the Copenhagen Wolves had the hardest Super Week of anyone, and still they managed to come out even at 2-2. Yesterday, they played well against SK Gaming, starting out with that lane swarm, taking down the two top turrets. However, they were always behind in gold and never really managed to quite win a team fight. eventually losing out the game. Yeah, the Copenhagen Wolves, they never managed to get a Dragon, and they simply gave up too much objective gold over to SK Gaming. So while they were ahead in kills, it never really felt like they were stronger in the team fights. And it seemed like the, the Wolves, they just wanted to play it very slow, because after they took the first few turrets in the lane swap, we just saw them with the standard Copenhagen Wolves tactic of getting forgiven on Jinx very farmed, but it just wasn't enough when it actually came to the team fights and SK Gaming, they were just stronger, which ended up giving them the Baron and of course the win. Well, the Copenhagen Wolves, they decided to play Karma again, which was actually, was the champion they stopped playing when their winning streak started. Yeah, it's actually a funny point because they didn't have any hard engage, hard engage yesterday, which has been an issue for them in the past. And it was actually something they changed around, which gave them some very positive results. Karma, she's in the meta at the moment. We can safely say it, everyone plays her, of course. But every team, or Copenhagen Wolves is not like every team. We have seen them in the past when they don't have any hard engage supports onto Unlimited. When he's not playing this Leona, it's very hard for him to do anything. And they just play very slow in the mid game because they don't know how to set anything up. And I actually feel like they need to stop playing Karma again, play some hard engage supports. That's when the losses started, actually, exactly. when Karma came around. However, the Wolves have given me looking to take this series 3-1 on the strength of their bot lane and jungle play. But will their slow play and patient strategies work against Fnatic team who are quickly pulling their way back up the standings. Well, it feels really good that we're up against them already. Um, if we could get a 3-1 record against Fnatic, that would be great for us. With Wolves, their main strength is their bot lane and jungler. Their bot lane is probably one of the best in Europe and their jungler as well. We have a really good jungle match in most cases. Mid lane seems to be um, equal every time as well and top lane seems to be in our favor and bot lane also. I think some games Wolves have uh, really good rotations, but some games on the other hand they seem to stumble a bit even on the more obvious things to do. I feel like Fnatic's rotation has been off, even if ours are off some games as well. Uh, I still feel we have outrated them the games we won at least. They looked very strong when they broke their uh, losing spree against Gambit. They did show a lot of improvement and now is the question if they can keep on improving and actually show that they have skills to beat us. Coming into this game, they're talking about how Fnatic broke that losing streak. Let's not forget, they've been to the Intel Extreme Masters. They were finalists there and, of course, picked up the win. So very confident coming into this game. Definitely. They don't have to fear anything here coming into the game against Copenhagen Wolves. I just have to highlight the fact that amazing. He's like, yeah, we have the better bot lane. We have the better <laughs> jungler, better top lane. Only mid lane is, is even. So let's see if it actually works out for Copenhagen Wolves. A little bit cocky, maybe. Let's find out. Let's check out those starting lineups. On the blue side, it is Fnatic. That means it will be Soaz in the top lane, Cyanide in the jungle, Peke in that mid lane, Reckless as AD carry, and Yellowstar as support. And on the red side, we have Copenhagen Wolves. We have Youngbug in the top lane, Amazing in the jungle, Kautad is, of course, the mid laner, Forgiven on AD carry, and Unlimited is the support. So you heard there, 
views on the game. What are our views? What do we think these picks and bounds? What are they going to lead in towards? Is it going to be jungle bounds? Well, if you go back to what Amazing said, the only lane that's even, according to him, is the mid lane. <laughs> so why not just start banning out Peke? We've seen well, maybe. the likes, of course, of LeBlanc could be banned away from him. Cassadin could be banned. I can even see Gragas. Lulu is a tricky pick for Fnatic because Source plays it in the top lane, but we haven't seen Peke play it in the mid lane, so I don't think it's going to be a ban. And I'm not even sure Fnatic wants to pick it or maybe even ban it themselves. We'll see how this one goes. We're going to be getting underway in just a second. So we'll see where those bands head. Will we seeing yet another rise in this game? Rise could be an option. I'm not sure if Youngbug actually plays it. And I know Source have been talking about Rise, but we haven't seen him play it yet. So I'm not 100% sold on this one. We could just see more standard top laners. Of course, Trundle has been an option for Youngbug many, many times in the past. And yeah, first ban from Cobring Wolves is towards the mid lane. So they want to make sure Peck is not having this LeBanc. And Lee Sin, of course, against Amazing, you have to ban away because he's so good on it. Karma also being taken away, as oh, you mentioned. Good for Wolves. Well, I mean, Unlimited would be happy that he's drawn a Karma ban. I'm of not course. too sure whether it was worthy of it yet, but again, another mid lane ban. This time, Nidalee taken away from Becky. So they want to make sure that Fnatic cannot do their poke combo where they just do fairly well in the mid, mid, uh, mid lane. They just want to farm on Peke, get out of the laning phase and just start landing the spears over and over. So they want to make sure this option is not available for final, Fnatic. Final ban potentially Gragas for Wolves maybe. He did fantastic on that yesterday. Gragas, we have of course Cassadin could be a ban. Mm -hmm. If they want to stay to this mid lane, Elise has been a first pick for Sana so many times. Could also be a possible ban. Otherwise I expect to see Fnatic early pick it. Yeah, with uh, Evelyn ban, Two we'll see what the Wolves go with. Will it be another mid laner if it is? and at least we'll get first picked in there. What we're expecting so far. Wolves taking the time on this final ban. Bit of a discussion. You can see Amazing putting his hands up. Not too sure which way to go. It was Cassidy. So let's see now if Kautar decides to get an early Gragas in the first rotation over here for Copenhagen Wolves. With, of course... Oh, oh actually the Lulu. Let's see if Source plays it, or maybe Peke have been practicing Lula and can take it in the mid lane. That would surprise Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, so I was took it in the top lane, what, two, three weeks ago now. And uh, we've already seen Zazas as well today with it in the top lane. It could be the mid laner, as you mentioned, but it does leave the likes of Annie open. Forgiven's got his choice of 80 carries if he wants to go for it, but instead it's amazing locking in that Elise. So they want to make sure to get the Elise away from Cyanide. They don't seem to care about Gragas just yet. Of course, we have seen Copenhagen Wolves in the past also playing Yasuo potentially see Kautar taking it as the last pick here, but with Elise taken away from Sana, he has to fall back to Pantheon, of course, Wukong, and of course, Ka6 was left open, so let's see Sana on this champion. Yeah, Ka6 being locked in now, Lucian also being in there, which means Forgiven almost certainly will be going towards Caitlyn, but let's talk about this Ka6 chip pick. It hasn't gone that successful so far in the European LCS. It's a hard to play it correctly, at least if you want to try and copy the way the Koreans played it. It requires a lot of practice with it. You need to be very aggressive, of course, when it comes to finding 1v1 fights, like we saw Insect do. And then when it comes to team fights, you have to go a little bit of damage and then you have to build towards some tankiness so you can get in the face of the enemy team and just delay the whole fights, make them turn around and try and hit you. And it's not been working too well for the Europeans yet, but let's see actually what Sana can do. It's only a matter of time whether it works out, of course. Insect we saw on this champion, which suddenly made everyone play it again, is actually a special case in, even in Korea, let alone in the, the worldwide scene. Renekton and Caitlyn were locked in, though, so it's going to be Young Book on that Renekton in that top lane, and of course, Caitlyn once again for Forgiven. So, very standard picks for Copenhagen Wolves. They have the very strong jungler for Amazing. They want to have this early game aggression so he can help the lanes out. We have seen him so many times carry the early game. Of course, Renekton, Young Buck, he wants to dominate the lane. And Caitlyn Annie, just very standard picks for Copenhagen Wolves, not showing anything yet. Well, full lane bully, it seems, will be Lulu in that mid lane for Peke, which means Giovanna. Giovanna Renekton, what a surprise. We're going to have that in the top lane. And Morgana, this is a champion that actually Yellow Star played very well at the Intel Extreme Masters and then decided to step away from it for a number of games, unknown reasons. Was banned away in one of the games as well. And also he decided to play Siren instead, so he wanted a more poke in the yeah, lane. Yeah, not convinced phase. by that one. Well, it was a bit up and down for him, but the Morgana pick, of course, here against the Annie. It's hard to black shield the tippers because it's an instant stun coming down towards you, but if you can time it correctly, you will be able to make sure that Lucian, of course, won't be locked down or when a team fight breaks out. Look at all the disengage here from Fnatic side, actually. You have Lulu, of course, you have Morgana of the Black Shield, you have the slow from Kha'Zix if you can land it onto them, and of course you have the dash for Lucian here, so a lot of disengage for Fnatic, they can really decide if they want to fight or not. Interesting choice, of course, Kaltard 
played a very good Kale in the earlier weeks of the LCS. May well get locked in again. We saw Froggen going huge on it yesterday. And it is a potential. Up against the Lulu, though. I still feel Lulu's going to have the edge. Yeah, Lulu is very, very strong lane bully against Kale, of course. I would also give the slight edge to Lulu here, but there's definitely room for Kale to make some plays early on and try and punish Lulu if she's too aggressive. And then again, the lineup from Cobra of Wolves here, they really signal they want to make sure that the laning phase, they're going to win it. They can go out of the laning phase, get an early dragon, get some early objectives and try and shut down Fnatic. And the thing about the Fnatic combo here, they really lack some hard engage. They actually rely on the fact that Cyanide can jump into the face of the enemy, get the ultimate from Lulu, knock them up. You have this CC, followed up here by Shivana. That's the whole combo for them if they want to start a fight. A potential tank for Cyanide and more importantly for Copenhagen Wolves, they've got a lot of burst damage. A lot of burst damage and of course with the Kale ultimate you can put it onto whoever target Fnatic is focusing on and try and turn the fight around here. But in general, with this combo here from Copenhagen Wolves, you have early game power of course in Caitlyn Renekton, you have the late game power also in Caitlyn and then in the Kale. So they just have a good all around mix and for them it's just all about winning the laning phase and then just by having this very standard combo, by having strong early game and also strong late game, they can actually just decide how they want to play the game. Well, with the champions lined up and ready to go, let's check out the vote on lolesports.com. It has you siding with Fnatic on this one by 82%. Big margin there for Fnatic. They have been looking pretty good lately, though. And also, I like the fact that Peg is now playing Lulu. It really gives another edge to Fnatic. Now you actually have to ban something like Lulu against them. We'll see how this one works out. We are about to get in the game. It is the final game of week nine in the European LCS. It's been a fantastic week and a fantastic day. Aggressive games. We'll see whether this one transcends into another aggressive matchup. What are you going with? This matchup? I like Fnatic's combo here, especially if they can survive early on and then get in to the point where Soros can outscale Youngbok and just start split pushing. And then you have this disengage with Lulu Morgana in the mid lane being so annoying to deal with. And let's not forget, if the Copenhagen Wolves this one, it's going to put them in a tricky situation yeah. in the standings. Fnatic chasing hard, making sure. Of course, Fnatic used to be top of the table. They went 7-0. Great start to the season, but as has been proven, that number one spot can be a curse. Here we go, though, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to get underway. Fnatic starting out as the blue team and clearly the crowd favorites up against the Copenhagen Wolves as the red team. So we actually see Unlimited on Annie here starting the Spell Thief's Edge. So he wants to have some early poke here. He wants to have some early damage. We've seen a lot of Thorn Shield. We've seen Ruby Crystal starts for Annie in the past to be a little bit more tanky. But he really wants to go in here Welcome with Forgiven and try and be ring. very aggressive in the lane. Just like we normally see from the Copenhagen Wolf spot lane. And the standard Shield and Sword battle will begin in that top lane. So as going early, getting a little poke on towards Youngbook there. and Does a little dance, makes a little noise. Staring into your book, and it's just like, lies down. I got this. <laughs> just chill. <laughs> yeah, so again, it's a matchup we've seen so many times. If it's going to go by the books, Renekton should get a CS lead early on, have the advantage, and then later on in the game, Source will start outscaling him, and that's where we need to see Fnatic. Wants to put a lot of effort on getting Source some help early on. We can see Sina coming up top lane. We have to remember, though, with this Kha'Zix, and I actually like what Yellowstar is doing here. This is the tactic we saw at IEM where Insect, he sneaked around people and he walked in behind and forced them to flash over the wall early. Yellowstar tried the same, but he was also all alone. Well, it was him that got caught out by it. It was so actually uh, him, so that's why I like <laughs> that he's doing it. So he's like, I, I've seen this, I know what yep. to do here. This didn't quite work out, didn't quite have the support either of the rest of his team. Nevertheless, nothing happens in the first two minutes of this game. It seems no late invades, no lane switching, just no nothing. But the Cobra Wolves bot lane, they always do the same thing. They walk down the lane, before the minions even spawn and just stand ready to instantly push the wave because they want to get early advantage, they want to shove Fnatic down all the way to the turret and of course with Annie, with Caitlyn, you have so good poke early on that if Fnatic is not playing careful or at least letting Copenhagen Wolves get level 2, they can take a lot of poke. Well, you see the two top buffs being taken. I mean, it's going to be the blue buff for Cyanide who's taken a hell of a beating from that goal on this time around. I think a crit hit came through there on towards him. Amazing will be taking that red buff as well and nobody really got deep wards as used to be the thing. They used to try and get that ward, try and get some vision of the junglers but nobody really got close enough this time around. We do see the dark party landing off Forgiven. That's just simply going to be a single basic attack though from Yellowstar. Meanwhile Unlimited, he continues doing the basic attacks and Reckless and every time they do land one of those shots, it's giving them gold. Yeah and 
this bottle and thing, just like we talked about before in the few seconds or 20, 30 seconds ago, it's what Covenant will do every single time. Push up here, want to get early level two. They got it here. A lot of pull to Yellow Star. <laughs> Crowd cheering Yellow Star every time he landed down Dark Pointed. We're not expecting the burst back from Unlimited there, that's for sure. And great Piltover Peacemaker coming out of Forgiven as well. Cyanide getting that red buff. We see Amazing doing the same. We'll see whether they go aggressive from level three onwards. Yeah, we have, of course, to remember with Kha'Zix, you normally want your level six before you really start taking these duels because you want to involve your ultimate, so you have the 50% damage reduction with your stealth. So let's see if he actually decides to just farm the way here because Elise is a very scary jungler to face check early on. You say normally, normally, insane. He we normally disagree waited to with six. you. He normally waited to level six. Level three was in the enemy jungle every single time. He was in uh, Cyanide's face, and Cyanide sadly did not realize it. As it is, so as in this top lane. Well, he's being pressured. No surprise there by Youngbug, by Renekton. Being pushed against that tower, but you can see he's keeping that farm going. Look at Amazing now. Coming around the backside of Peke. Peke, of course, has that shield, has that speed buff. Will he manage to get out of this one? He, will he get killed by the cocoon? He's so, so slow from Kaltai there. The cocoon does land, but he got on towards the tower. And I like how Amazing is delaying his stun here, putting all the abilities onto Peggy. Wants to force an early flash and then land the cocoon before Peggy got under the turret. But nice play here, especially by Amazing, forcing early flash from Peggy. So he needs to be careful now. Well, Reckless is really doesn't have a great deal of follow-up. Yeah, let's start catching that Darbinding every time, but there's just nothing to blast through. Of course, the Piltover from Forgiven is following every single time. Unlimited man's out stun. We have to remember that Annie's doing more damage than Morgana yes. in the fight, so in, in case Regulus decide to dash in there for the damage, Annie's there to turn around, and once the binding is gone from Yellowstar and he's not level 6, he doesn't really give you anything other than a few auto attacks. And that's about all he's getting right now. So I was doing a grand job at keeping up with Youngbug here. He doesn't want to step too far away from that turret, but it does give the junglers some free time. It means they really don't need to focus on this top lane. Youngbook taking a hell of a beat in there, actually, from the minions and from Soas's burnout, continuing to rush on towards him. Cyanide's backed off, gone towards that Spirit Stone, along with the Pink Ward and Normal Ward. Expect to see Amazing maybe doing the same at the moment. He's looking for an invade on the race. Oh, actually, maybe he wants to try another gang on to this mid lane here because, of course, the flash is gone for Pekka. There was a ward just before, but it timed out, so he actually doesn't know he's there. He's in a good position, however, to just back off, and, of course, we need to remember he's having the whimsy to speed himself up. Yeah, he's also got a lot of mana. No pressure on him, but we see Amazing's coming around the backside of him. He has managed to get in there. Will he land that cocoon? That's going to land. It will do. Pekka is going to go down first, but Kaltard. So the early aggression from Amazing really pays off. Now, Youngbuck face checking Cyanide. Oh, Cyanide jumps on towards him. Youngbuck flashes. The Cyanide flashes back for it. Gets the unseen threat proc and manages to burst him down. So absolutely perfect for Cyanide because Youngbuck, he runs straight into his face. There was no ward. Both junglers getting good early games. And now Reckless taking a lot of Reckless damage. Reckless caught out. Is it going to be enough? The net shot does come through with the Ignite running, but they didn't have the damage. They haven't hit five there, six yet either, so they haven't got that ultimate on Reckless. But look at all the damage here from Covenant Wolves. One stand landed from Annie, and they just follow up with everything. A lot of damage onto Reckless, and he needs to be careful because he will have to blow Summoner next time he gets caught. A lot of damage onto that tower, let alone Reckless. You can see it's been chunked down here by the Copenhagen Wolves bottom lane pair, and Annie's working well. Amazing coming round. He's unseen in towards that tribush area. Oh, Yellow Star and Reckless are sticking around. They do not know he's there. Cyanide is going towards the golems here, so he's not too far away in case something should happen here. But let's see if Covering Wolves actually feels they can dive this one. He's actually going straight in here. He's expecting something. Yeah, Cyanide was there. He saw it. Yeah, Star is going to pull out that pool, but that tower will go down. And now they're going to come through. They got the stunner towards Reckless. They try and push on through. Reckless forced to get away from that one. Flash was used by Unlimited there and Reckless. Yeah, so he, Unlimited, he forced out the flash from Reckless by just going straight for him with some more damage. Of course, the Ignite was not ready for Unlimited, but still, he forced the summon on Reckless, and they got the bot turret here. So Copenhagen Wolves bot lane showing how strong they are. And Fnatic talked in the pregame video about how good this bot lane is. Oh, amazing, of course, on Elise doing what you can do, using those little spider links to tank up that dragon. And Copenhagen Wolves reacting. Four members on this dragon. They're going to take it with ease. So very good play by Copenhagen Wolves early on. We had, of course, the gang from Amazing in the mid lane, making sure Kautard got some early advantage, got the first bot and kept up in farm. And then with this very strong bot lane and with seeing Cyanide up in the top lane for the kill on to Youngbuck, they knew they could just continue pushing on in bot. There was no chance of Cyanide being there. So Blue Wolf going across the Peke, well, that's the plan. We'll see whether it does or not. We've seen a few mistakes being made by some of these lanes, but Peke will pick that one up, no problem there. 
This top lane pairing is going very well for Sowers at the moment. He's only, what, five CS behind. Of course, Youngwook did get caught out. The assist went to Sowers as well, which means he's actually ahead in gold at the moment on Youngbuck. Yeah, well, there was, of course, the dragon for Kormaling of Wolves actually going, giving the gold towards the Youngbuck here, so he should be ahead in gold. And he's doing a very good job, at least Sowers' side, to keep up and farm here. And we just have to remember Youngbuck he needs to continue extending his lead because with a few items on the build onto Source, he will be stronger, and that is the issue of accommodating walls they need to remember. And of course, Cyanide, level 6, involves his ultimate here. Big differences in AD Carry's build up here. Vampiric Scepter and Boots were picked up by Reckless, but look at Forgiven. Full damage. Went for that long sword along with the BF sword. Could have got the boots, felt he didn't need them. But he simply, he had gold enough when he actually recalled to just get full damage as you just said. And Forgiven, he's one of the 80 carries who never build any defensive items, or rarely does, because he just lost with full damage. And Limited needs to be careful here. Well, he was called out, hadn't got flash available, but he knew that his jungler and an AD carry were fairly close by. So I know it's going to have to recall back to base, get himself a few items. Mid lane pairings there, both hitting level 7 now. And amazing is paying yet another visit. Pecky does have flashback available this time. And he's also pinging out amazing, so he knows where he is, and he instantly just backs off to the turret, taking no chance. Also because Sanat had recalled to base, so he wouldn't be able to help him in case a fight should be breaking out. Well, I mean, the, the bonus with Lulu is he can farm from a very long way out. Yellow Star is coming around to see if he can he's only level throw four. Count. He is only level four. He's been doing a lot of roaming. Four levels below Peke and manages to actually pick up the bonus experience there alongside Peke, which puts him to five. Yeah, so look how Fnatic are playing with this bot lane. They know they can't move any close towards the Cobrain Wolves one, so they're just staying. Regulus just waiting for something to happen. That's why Yellowstar could roam towards the mid lane, because as long as Caitlyn is keeping the way where he is now, Fnatic can't do anything to stop him farming. Oh, Yellowstar caught, but of course, with that black shield, quickly counters any damage being put out by Kowtar. Hasn't got that burst available to him just yet. And he's helping out Sina. Not too sure if he wanted the help or not, but he's getting it nonetheless. And what we actually saw this game early on in the bot lane is one of the reasons not everyone loves to play Morgana support because as we talked about, in case a fight should be happening two versus two, and he just does so much more damage than Morgana. So he was never able to do anything other than land the binding and wait for Reckless to do something. And it simply meant all the pressure on, was on Cobalt both side. Limited making sure that Reckless is zoned away from the experience here and zoned away from that gold. It is a big differential for Forgiven since he's been down this bottom lane, like you said, freezing that lane out. Look at it, 62 to 96. They're actually even in lane trades until that tower went down. Yeah, but again, Reckless now, he can pick up a very big wave here and Forgiven just staying around. He wants to push it all the way down to the turret so he can reset. That's why we actually see him staying, even though it's very dangerous because they don't have too much vision. Well, Amazing's going to pass by a water. They know that he is heading in there. We do see the little poke going out there. They're keeping him pushed on towards that tower. Don't think they have intentions of trying to take this tower down. They're simply, as he said, resetting that wave and Forgiven happy to step away from that one with a gigantic 30 CS lead. And now Amazing is spotted by this ward. They didn't actually see beforehand, so in case Fnatic wanted to fight, he would have been around helping out his lane. Of course, that's one of the reasons they stay and just push it all the way up. But they just continue to do damage here and going in. Oh, they've got Flash Timbers. Piltover comes across. The Ignite's running is not enough, though. And Limited, he's in trouble. Sino gets on towards him, takes the tower hit. Sino takes a chunk of damage. Quick Black Shield comes out of Yellowstar and they step away, but the tower is still taking damage. So very aggressive play by Unlimited, but the rest of Copenhagen Wolves were not ready to really follow it up. So Yellowstar, he got out alive and then Cyanide turned it around to get a reckless. Got a kill here, but Copenhagen Wolves, they just stay and push. They still keep pushing. They did see that Peke had gone up towards the top lane, had to quickly run straight back towards that mid lane. Fnatic do clear out the pressure, but they still got about half the hit points down on that middle turret, uh, bottom turret, sorry. And two early kills onto Sina here, very good for him onto Kha'Zix. He's going to be very strong coming into the team fights. And I just have to highlight Sina once again, actually. He, he's been impressing me for a long time. He's been playing so well every single game for Fnatic. He's just been doing work. Well, Youngbook returns to the top. Got himself that tier mat, got himself a giant's belt alongside him. Some Viking has been picked up by Soaz, but Youngbook is going to start being a bit of a tower pusher now. That's his job, and that's his plan, and that is what he's going to be doing as he stacks out those minis in the top. What are Fnatic going to do to try and counter this one? Dragon is up in 50 seconds, and you already see Copenhagen Wolves starting to ward out, starting to ward in towards Fnatic's jungle to get themselves some vision.
And as long as Source can delay this top turret for dying, he can just constantly farm. And then he doesn't even care about Youngbug being between the two turrets here farming. Because as long as he picks up the farm he wants, he's going to get the items he needs. And then he's going to be the very strong Shivana in the team fights. Ooh, Fnatic getting in there, taking down two pink wards and getting themselves some good vision around that dragon, which means they almost certainly want to contest it. They've already spotted as well that uh, Youngbug, he went deep. He tried to farm between the two towers in that top lane. And decided to go for a bit of a walk through the jungle. Yeah, notice how uh, Source actually went straight down towards the dragon because he knew Youngbug was rotating there because, of course, it's spawning very, very soon. But he actually returned to the top lane, so Kobalang was also having all five members at around this dragon. Let's see if Fnatic just want to give it up and make sure, actually see if Source can take the top lane turret instead. Well, Youngbug took a lot of damage there. He's going to help them off from that tower. Meanwhile, Ace and the Hole being used on Cyanide, forcing him away. If he's going to jump in for this one instead, the stun comes out from a limited. Dragon goes across to the walls once again. Yeah, very scary, and you don't really want to try and have a smite wall with Elise here, so wisely enough, he did not try and go for it. Meanwhile, though, Source of in the top lane just hammering away on the turret. He won't be able to get it on the first wave, but if he can just get it with the next one, it's fine for Fnatic. Well, there was a lot of damage on Youngberg, but job done. He kept them away from the tower, and that's all he needed to do. As you mentioned, Soaz has got himself a bunch of free farm in that top lane and put a lot of pressure on the tower. Bottom lane wave. Seems that Fnatic don't want to push on this one yet. We do see Forgiven, he's going to go down there and get himself, continue to get himself a big chunk of farm, and that's going to keep him well ahead of Reckless. Yeah, and look at this. He's already having the blood first onto Forgiven. Reckless just went back. He couldn't even buy the blood first yet, so he's going to be very, very far behind, actually, when it comes to the next few minutes. Because we need to remember, of course, Forgiven, he can stack up the blood first to get the 30 additional AD, which is very good for him. And Reckless, he's just going to be stuck with this blood, or with this... Uh, be of sort for now. No match of teams was picked up by Kautan. Standard builds really from these two mid laners along with the Athenes of course for Peck 8. We'll see whether Cyanide decides to go tanky after this one. He has gone for the AD item here. Uh, Spirit of the Elder Lizard in that jungle so far so hasn't gone anything defensive just yet as opposed to Amazing you can see has gone for that 200 hit point item, 350 health item. So amazing again, or looking at the junglers, just as you talked about with Cyanide, we've seen a lot of different routes when it comes to builds here. We've seen the almost full damage Kha'Zix jungle, we've seen the very tanky ones. Cyanide here, if he decides to build tanky, he will be the front line together with Soas. Damage-wise for Fnatic's side, they're going to lack something because they have this Lulu mid, and of course it's going to be a lot about Reckless. So I could actually see Cyanide go more damage-wise and then rely on the ultimate from Pekka to be the tanky. See how it works out for them. In that bottom lane, Cyanide actually may well try and sneak around the backside of Forgiven. He's got no support with him at the moment, and he could try and sneak his way in there. You can see he's evolved his ultimate, so he will be able to stealth his way in. But that Dark Binding catches on Kautard. That takes half his hit points off along with Lunge Glitter Lances. Yeah, a lot of damage here, of course. Yellow Star is maxing the Dark Binding, so it's going to be a very long snare. I believe actually it's three seconds at rank five. That's very. A lot of CC you're hitting onto the enemy here. Opening the match, do go for a little invade. They take themselves the pink ward down. Hello, yellow star caught at the side. They may go aggressive, they do. Flash Timbers on this one straight away. Cocoon goes in. The wild goes to react on this one. Cyanide leaps in. Is he going to get enough damage down? That's the question. He's trying to track amazing. You do see yellow star going down. The ultimate being used by Kaltai trying to turn that one back around the shield on Cyanide. The ultimate is just enough to counter all the damage coming out from the walls. Oh. A flash comes out. Kaltai does not manage to land enough damage. And the culling comes wow. out. And Reckless, Reckless gets himself killed. Saras leaps in there towards the back. The ignite runner on Kaltai should be enough. It is Saras that gets himself a kill on there. And Fnatic turn it around and get themselves two kills. Absolutely beautiful ultimate from Reckless. Getting the kill onto Amazing just turning around so he gets the last hit onto him, killing him, and then of course Soas coming in from the backside before Youngbog actually could join the fight, getting the kill, and he's now going very aggressive here. Soas does not have that Dragon Descent available to him, whereas Dominus is up for Youngbog along with that Ignite, so Soas realizing, hang on a minute, this is probably not a great idea and backs away. And the reason Kautot actually died was because he tried to flash in and get the last kill onto Pekka here, but it didn't work for him, he didn't have enough damage, so instead when he backed out, there was no flash and Source could just come in, hit him a few times, ignite him, and he was dead. It is a pretty close game. Still just 200 gold for separating these two teams. It is a tower apiece, and actually it's the wolves with the dragons, and 
Having some great farm on their AD carry. Mid lane though, you can see Peke starting to bully out that mid lane farm. He's got himself a nearly 40 CF differential over Kaltan. Kaltan has got those two kills though. So Pink Ward's being cleared out, everything being swept, and we're back to position just before that aggression all began. Yeah, but there's a lot of time till the dragon spawns, so they need to stay in these lanes for a little bit. You see both AD carries coming down to the bot lane. Reckless, he's not trying to overextend or anything. He doesn't want to go and hit the turret because he knows there's a chance that the rest of uh, Copenhagen Wolves bot lane are going to come down here and catch him out. Carter doing a lot of issues here in the mid lane. Like they're going aggressive. He may well one die more on that one. One more ah. Q, not going to be enough because he quickly uses the intervention. And that was needed because he would have popped. Yeah, that's the reason you get the earlier fiends here on Lulu. So you get enough cooldown reduction, you can activate your Q twice on one E onto the target. That's why also Kaltot, he was just waiting and popped his ultimate when he knew the Q was ready again for Peke. So mid lane is being pushed in. Amazing and limited will defend this one. No, no problem about that. And limited went for those boots of swiftness. Uh, boots of ability, sorry. Going to be trying to dash himself around that jungle. See if he can try and make an impact. And you can tell because he's leaving Forgiven all on his own. He's constantly Forgiven. He's off farming, 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 continuing to keep that advantage over Reckless. And he's going to have this reduced cooldown on Flash as well. And it unlimited. He's the one who always doing the engages for Copenhagen Wolves. That's why I like the way he's building it. Because as soon as he's having Flash tapers, they can start a fight. They can set something up. We've seen him do it twice already. Now Saw has been caught out a little bit. So is in trouble. Blue buff on him. But you see Amazing catching on towards him. There's still not really enough damage. He has got that Dragon Descent and feeling confident in this one. Realizes the Kaltide is coming round he's gonna try and juke them out there he does manage to get away and flashes oh. into the baron pit nice escape but the baron is gonna lay down some smack onto soaz but it's not quite enough a very nice escape here forcing three members from Copenhagen walls to go out towards the top lane dragon is spawning in seven seconds and young buck he's trying to run all the way down here but fanatic are in a good position to start it they should be able to take this dragon down very quickly as well they have the damage to do so and you can see it drop it very very quickly just coming around the side is the copenhagen wolves yellow star running interference throwing out that dark binding not really landed the wolves fancy this one but look at the damage that one glitter lance just did from peke and look at the disengage we talked about in champs like how morgana with the black shield and the bindings and of course lulu as soon as Fnatic took the Dragon, they said, we don't want to fight, and instant disengaged, landed the slow, and just backed out. And quick rotations from Fnatic, they realized their mid lane was in danger. So as he's back in there in defensive duties, and the rest of Fnatic comes straight up through that jungle and forced the Copenhagen Wolves away. And so is here now. He's keeping even in farm. Yes, he did use the flash in his ultimate to escape before, but that was just fine because they got the dragon from it. So it's perfect move by him. And he's doing so well in farm. And now he's actually playing very aggressive, very confident here. Because he knows he's very, very tanky at this point. Well, the problem is he's running interference because Fnatic, the rest of the team, are pushing that mid lane. And really, he's just drawing them away while they buy time on towards his middle inner turret. Just, uh, sorry, outer turret. That's going to go down. Reckless with one more shot. Takes it down and the red buff to Soas. Yeah, great play once again. Just like you said, Soas actually forced multiple members from Comrade Wolves to stay around before they realized, oh, our mid turret is about to die. We have to rotate in there. But it was too late. So Fnatic doing a very good job on the map at the moment. So... Slight edge to Fnatic with that thousand gold. The dragon they just picked up. Amazing, we've taken that race, no problem there. Bottom lane pairings. Let's have a look at these two. Reckless has been playing catch up for a long time on Forgiven and still is, honestly. He's what 40 CS behind. He has got a gigantic wave right now to push in there, and they are building slightly different, as you would expect with a Lucian versus a Kitten. But as long as Pega can stand in this mid wave here, uh, mid lane and wave clear. Reckless can always come down in bot lane, get a lot of farm. He's been getting a lot now where Forgiven, Recall to base, and now have to go down towards the mid lane. And Copenhagen Wolves, they can you know, go four members to the mid lane, try and set something up and have Youngbug who can still hold at least 1v1 against Source. But look at this, Source position up here. Youngbug has no idea he's there. Luke is coming in, Sanat here from the bottom. Sneaking around and there he is, stealths his way in. The damage onto Youngbug, Dominus is popped, but I just don't think it's enough to escape. He gets a slice and dies, but you can see he's quickly caught out. The flash comes out, but he's just going to be fodder for Soaz. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful gang set up here. Source, he waited up in the bush here. Youngbug had absolutely no idea what what was about to happen, even used the flash because he tried to run down to his team, but it was just too far away and he died. Now Copenhagen Wolves pushing on to mid lane, going on Pekka. They're going heavy on Pekka and they just drop him where he stands. That was a quick lockup and a kill. Can they get the turret down? They should have enough here with Kaltard Unforgiven hammering it down. And that's why I love Unlimited on any or on something where you can engage, just instantly popping the tippers. Doesn't even think. 
Well, Reckless pushed that bottom wave and it put a hell of a lot of minions on towards that turret. I don't think it's quite going to be enough, or will it? No, Forgiven should get down there just about in time. You can see the hit points, the minions are clearing it out there. But that's going to be yet another big chunk of farm for Forgiven. So this game, every time something happens in the top lane or in the bot lane, we have something else happening in the mid lane, just the other team responding. That's why they're so even in gold and it's been a very even early game. We've actually quite some action and I really enjoyed. Yeah, 22 minutes gone. Four towers down and eight kills to the good so far. But there is lots of action to go because these teams have yet to really penetrate anywhere in each other's jungle or in each other's inner turrets. They are all untouched as of yet. Peke on Lulu. Yet to really get going. You can see he's got some great farm, but he's at 0 2 1. Kaltar has started to get those kills, and we know that Kales, if they get free time on a turret, will do a lot of damage. Yeah, just general kill going into the late game is such a monster. She scales so well with everything, and of course, her ultimate at rank 3 with the low cooldown. It's very hard to deal with because you have the first team fight, you pop the ultimate, and then if you disengage, it's going to be ready again for next time you go in, and it's so annoying late game with this kill. And of course, as you talked about, with the Lich Bane, with the high amount of uh, AP, your tower damage is insane. And with that mid turret down, we now see Kaltard has rotated lanes. He's now the split push up for the Copenhagen Wolves, trying to push that top lane in. So as his running defensive duties, though, has got just about enough to keep him away. Still no damaging items going full tank. So as so he is going to be the man that's going to be going in first for Fnatic. Yeah, Source is going to be in the face of Copenhagen Wolves every single time. And he knows that when Sana goes in with him, Sana wants to kite around with his ultimate. So that's why Source needs to be able to just stay in the face of Copenhagen Wolves all the time. And wow. Look at this, three Ooh. members from Fnatic in the bot lane and Copenhagen Wolves with the pink ward starting the Baron. No idea that this is happening, they may well give up an inner turret for it. You can see the uh, bottom pairing of uh, Kaltar trying to rotate around, trying to stop this one, but this is going to be a Baron for Copenhagen Wolves. Fnatic, no idea about it, they do get themselves that inner turret, but is it worth it? Definitely not worth it here. Very nice move by Copenhagen Wolves, but let's see Source up here. He shouldn't be able to get this one because now Copenhagen Wolves can close in on him. They're giving a young buck moving in towards this one. They are going to get the damage. He takes a tower hit as well. The trap does go down. Not quite enough. Dragon's Descent does give him a speed boost. He's going to be able to get that Burning Agony to try and run away from this one. Young buck gives up on it. So as does manage to escape. The rest of Fnatic, they're rotating around. They're pushing in the mid turret. Can they get the ender down? So Fnatic, they only got one turret and then Copenhagen Wolves took the Baron here. So very nice move as soon as they saw the members down here in the bot lane pushing up. So now let's see here. Copenhagen Wolves with the Baron buff. Can they actually group up as a team and start being aggressive? Well, to make this Baron worthwhile, giving up that turret, they have to try and take some turrets of their own. You can see them all pushing in this mid lane. Ace in the hole being used on Yellow Star, forcing him to stop recalling. And now they're going to push down. 20 seconds on that dragon. It seems to be the next focus for the Wolves. And look at Source here. He's pinging the top lane turret. So they don't definitely don't want to fight this dragon for Fnatic's side. They just want Source to try and get it. And that's why he's rushing there, pushing the lane out. And you see Youngbok instantly, he's like, whoa, our top lane. He can actually go down here, and that's why he's returning back to the mid lane and will try and go up top. Yeah, gets slowed by Peke, not going to be able to do it. Cyanide also moving in towards this one, so second in the turret, almost certainly the focus target for Cyanide and Soas. The rest of Copenhagen Wolves, they try and rotate, they try and force Peke away from this one, but three members of Fnatic are now in that jungle. Again, taking that red buff, they're pushing on the turret, they're going to get it. And they get the turret and the red buff against the team with Baron. So Fnatic are just playing Copenhagen Wolves around the map here. Yes, they might be able to pick up this dragon, but they still Look up in this top lane. Still, members from Fnatic pushing on. Look at the mid lane. Peke's in there. He's pushing on towards that inner turret. And would you believe it? The Fnatic, despite the fact there's a Baron, four Wolves are just chasing around this map here. And they are going to move in. Four members, five members, all on towards this inner turret. The Copenhagen Wolves are floundering. They're not too sure what the hell is happening. They've just lost three inner turrets against the team with Baron. And Forgiven was just standing in the bot lane. He walked down there instead of helping with the dragon, instead of helping defend, he just went bot lane, decided to recall when they already lost the mid turret. So Fnatic just outplaying Copenhagen Wolves at the moment on the map. The Wolves going to try and push through that mid lane. Fnatic are over the side, so they may have to give up the one in the turret. They certainly don't want to give up the inhibitor turret, though. The rest of the Wolves are catching up. They are going to get around there, but Reckless, he There's has the calling. pulling, and he can just wipe out that minion wave if he needs to. And uh, actually, the minion wave is coming behind them. It wasn't even close by, so they just pushed up there. No minion wave, but with the one coming in here, Fnatic is in a position to defend. Let's see if they can actually wave clear. Or if Copenhagen Wolves want to be very aggressive and try to dive. I think with that Baron being a simple opportunistic moment, I don't think they're going to dive it. I don't think they've got enough. They know that Lucian is not there, though. Reckless down that bottom lane, so they are on a 4v5 advantage at the moment. 
Fnatic just need to hold off here. They don't have to fight if they can just delay till the Baron buff is gone. Even if they can actually see the Baron when it disappears, they can time it with three minutes from there. So it would be very good for them to get the timer. Good damage on Forgiven there. Dark Binding just missing out though. Have to use that 90 caliber net to bash away. They do have to get the minions down. They go not back and they just burst him straight down. Sinai jumps in, but he takes a lot of that damage. So is using that dragon to to escape. They do manage to get Young Buck down. Yellow Star pays the price. It is going to be Sinai getting caught out there. They do get themselves a turret, but it was a risky, risky play. It was a two for one in the end. So Copenhagen Wolves, they felt confident diving this one. And once again, it is unlimited on Annie. He starts the fight, land the tables, instantly just blow up at Pekka. Top wave, though, has a giant push on towards that inhibitor turret. Copenhagen Wolves, they will be able to take that one down. Amazing has just respawned to go up there. Red buff will be given across to Forgiven, but i got to be honest, I think Fnatic have certainly got the edge over Wolves in that Baron. But look at this here, with the Baron buff, Copenhagen Wolves are just saying, we can actually dive this one. The Black Shield is gone, that's why Unlimited can go in onto Peggy, who overextends, instantly blows him off. Once again, Unlimited with the engage, then they continue chasing here, Source have to back out, and Sanat almost jumping out, but then the Q from Amazing is getting the kill here, so they get the turret and two kills. And all due to the fact that Black Shield was gone, he just instantly said, we can go on this. The moment it was taken down, Tibbers was pulled out the closet. So, Fnatic, they have themselves a 6-3 turret advantage. Of course, that top turret is still untouched. So as is guarding that one every step of the way. We'll take out that ping ward, not that it's much use. It gives them slight little bit of vision. In this mid lane, we see and hear a very loud carving of Kautard taking down those minions. So we have now, Peg has been pushing down the bot lane, it's going to go all the way up, you actually see Fnatic even pinging it. This simply means they can group up now and start pushing up the mid lane, and then force Copenhagen Wolves to send multiple members to different lanes here. But it seems though Copenhagen Wolves, they're just going to rotate at least, so now they actually see the Fnatic group in the mid lane, so they're going to try and return back here. But will they try and fight? Look at Unlimited, he's coming in from behind. They keep getting drawn towards Sellers, this back time in the around, top. they may get enough. Amazing comes around, he's got to land a cocoon, and if Tibbers does go down, they catch on towards it. It's Pekka, Yellowstar takes the ace in the hole, they all jump away from this one, it's a good culling, it takes down Tibbers. Jungwin's going to try and get around there, the rest of his team desperately trying to catch up, but the disengage from Fnatic is so good, slowing the entire team down. They may try and counter it. Yeah, absolutely fantastic disengage from Fnatic using the Lulu, using the Morgana to say we actually be caught out of position here. Instantly backs off, even with the Tibbers from Unlimited, nobody died. And that bottom wave has a giant stack again. Every time this happens, Fnatic have pushed a wave, and that inhibitor turret is taking damage from those minions. It won't be enough to take it down, but it's certainly a hell of a, enough a lot of minions that are losing, and Copenhagen War's not going to get them. Dragon, up in two minutes, Baron, up in a minute. Well, We'll see who gets them. Three members from Copenhagen Wolves up in this top lane. Again, they decide to recall because they see Fnatic just pushing up the mid lane. And Kisana trying to jump here on to Kale. Just uses that ultimate, tries to catch Kaltard out of position. Fnatic really are running rings around the walls right now. Sinel's ultimate will be used. It is uh, going to be on cooldown, but Youngbuck is slightly out of position here. Maybe going to try a pincer on towards Fnatic. They do see Soaz in the bush. Youngbuck steps out, but four members of Fnatic are all there. Now he's going to try and tank this one through. Dominus is up. Soaz is getting picked off as well. The rest of the Wolves do manage to rotate round, but again, they can't catch the Fnatic out, and they don't really have the vision to chase. But credit to Copenhagen Wolves for constantly trying to set up these fights. First in the mid lane when Swords was up top, and now here with Youngbuck waiting behind here, just trying to land a stun onto someone from Fnatic, starting the fight, but every single time it's the same story. They can disengage, and Copenhagen Wolves, they just seem to always be on the back foot. Soaz refuses to let that top turret go down. Straight away returns back up there, wipes himself, yet another wave out, and now he's actually built himself a 50 CS advantage over Youngwood, because Youngwood's simply been chasing around the map while he continues to keep on pushing that top wave in. The bottom wave, that's being pushed in by Fnatic as well. We do see, of course, Baron is now up, and ward control, well, it's in the advantage of Fnatic so far, but I think the Wolves are going to try and take that away from them. Yeah, just clearing this ping board here is very important for Unlimited, and then they have actually some good wards around in this jungle. It's a bit deeper in, so they can see Fnatic if they decide to camp in the jungle. They won't be using the vision in there to actually prevent the Baron from happening. But the rest of the team is here. Only Kautard is in the top lane pushing. So both teams are where the Baron is, of course, up, and both teams, they want to get it. A little bit of poke from Sinai, a little bit of poke from Reckless, keeping Unlimited away from those wards, and Fnatic this time have themselves vision of it. They're not going to get caught out this time around. Unlimited does get himself caught by that dark binding. Despite the fact they don't have vision, the fact that he's got that spell piece, of course, will give him the gold tick so he knows he's just got someone. 
And let's see here for Copenhagen and Wolves. They are standing five together. Same goes for Fnatic, actually, except for Pekka now. He wants to push out this bot lane again. We've seen it time and time. They push it out, and then they go back as a group and force Copenhagen and Wolves to fight. And of course, Pekka with that Lulu, with the ability power, he will have the movement speed to just charge yeah, up he's that very far. river if he needs to. Amazing. Soloing out the dragon while the rest of the Wolves keep Fnatic busy just off the edge. So very good movement here by Amazing, getting the dragon, and of course, late game gives more and more gold. And Copenhagen Wolves have been doing a fantastic job getting objectives four dragons and one baron and only one dragon onto the side of fanatic so top and bottom wave are going to push in favor of fanatic this mid wave we can see the negative walls are sitting around yellow star looking to try to catch something out to flash timbers into four man timbers from unlimited but the rest of the team weren't quite quick enough to react to that one Youngbook goes aggressive yellow star goes down he's also a wash running cyanide now trying to jump on towards forgiven but he's just being tanked out have they got enough Youngbook goes down Kautar gets focus interventions not available and he goes down into triple give reckless it may well be a quadra it is can they catch on towards amazing amazing run he's not having any of it but look at the power of Kha'Zix in this team fight. How annoying is it? Pegge, he wants to get Amazing down while the rest of Fnatic are pushing towards the inhibitor. He's got the speed to catch on towards him. He's got the damage. And Amazing's going to try and skitter away from this one. Where are you going to repel to? Blue buff. Pegge will take get that, that one for free. Buff. And he'll get the blue buff. The rest of the team, they're shoving on the inhib. So Fnatic here with a very nice team fight. Once again, we saw Unlimited with the engage. But then we also saw again, power of Sanad. If we get the replay here, notice how much time he's actually buying his own backline to kill the rest of Copenhagen Wolves, and then they can come in and join. When Sanad actually survives, and now Fnatic starting the Baron, and of course Copenhagen Wolves not in a position to stop it. Yeah, Rakdus just dashes across. Three members there, four members will be joining them as Soaz comes across, he can jump in. Let's check out this replay. This is the big fight. Yeah, so it is the engage from Unlimited onto three members from Fnatic here, and then notice Sanad or Soaz jumping to the backline, and then Sanad doing the same thing. Down here in the bottom, we have Pekka and Reckless staying together very nice, just kiting backwards. And then notice Sanad here with his ultimate, how much damage he's actually tanking out. Two members, three members actually, four members of Copenhagen Wolves hitting him, trying to kill him, but he's stealthed off, pops, then he's ran to it. And then the rest of the Fnatic here can now join in when they've killed the front line and just take kill after kill. And of course, Reckless, he wanted the Penta, but amazing, just backed away. And that whole fight, Reckless was just off the side, untouched free damage, and the cooling actually landing his entire combo on towards the Wolves. We do see the blue buff being picked up by Kautard, of course, Baron buff was completed by Fnatic just while that replay was shown. And this fight just showed that the front line of Fnatic is harder to kill for the back line of Copenhagen Wolves than the other way around. That's why they had the advantage here, because you saw both of them fighting the same way. They wanted to kill Source, they wanted to kill Cyanide. Meanwhile, they had Youngbug and Amazing trying to dive onto the back line of Fnatic, but they just didn't have the damage to take them down. Well, that pesky Soaz is back in the top lane and pushing them waves back in. Somebody's going to have to go and deal with him while the rest of Fnatic push out the middle and bottom lanes. We do see Peke, he's just shoved out that wave. Kautard is going to keep that one at bay. Cyanide and Peke moving as a terrible team. It used to be the likes of Peke and Soaz. They were the killer team. But now Peke has got himself a new buddy in the form of Cyanide. And of course, with this exposed inhibitor, a five-man Baron is just going to push it. Yeah, and Fnatic are just going to group up here. They want to fight for this one. If Copenhagen Wolves decide to engage, then they are ready. There's no flash onto any yet. So the engage for Copenhagen Wolves have to come from the likes of Cocoon or Youngbox jumping in. And you quickly see the speed on Reckless there. Of course, as soon as he gets that little buff on him from Peke, he can just zap away. He keeps on getting that damage down. Black Shield goes on towards him. The moment he sees Amazing off Unlimited trying to step towards him, so as tanks out all the damage, the cooling comes out. That inhibitor is going down. Will Fnatic keep pushing? The top and bottom waves are available. Look at this, with the double shields onto Reckless when he went towards the inhibitor. It is so much extra help from, from Lulu here. Look, it's so hard to take him down. It's also the ultimate, so if Copenhagen was one to engage, they need to go and win the Black Shield is down. Youngbook really isn't tanky enough anymore to try and engage on this one. He's going to have to use that Dominus simply to survive at the moment. And the rest of Fnatic keep on poking. Flash Tibbers is available if Unlimited wants to use it. You can see he's holding that stun, but he's going to have to catch an amazing ultimate if he gets on towards them. Yeah, the Black Shield again is ready for Yellow Star. He also having the mid-kill in case and he hits a key target. He can then cleanse the target and make sure they don't get locked up and they can actually back out of the fight then. And look at Reckless. Just double shield every time. Gets a few hits onto the turret. Very hard for Copenhagen Wolves to actually deal with this. 
Indians continuing to push through that mid lane. Super Minions will be there in a few moments. The Culling coming out once again. This time again, it is catching Amazing out, forcing him away. Yet more damage. Reckless is going to step close. Whoa! Whoa! Big burst of damage. That proves the danger that Fnatic have. They're going to back away from this one. So Fnatic have to back off here. The ace in the hole from the game did a lot of damage. Outside, actually chasing on here. Yellowstar have to flash. Covenant Wolves, they want to fight. They may try and turn it, and they do. You can see Soas going in there on towards the limit, and the quick wild growth being popped on towards him. We see a Kautar being picked off. Sinai gets away with that ultimate. He does finally go down to the Ignite, but it doesn't matter. Youngbuck's been taken down, and Limited's got next to no help. Forgiven's been dropped out. They're going to continue chasing. It's another triple kill being picked up by Reckless. Can he get the Quadra? The Rebel comes in. Amazing's trying to draw them away from the inhibitor. Not going to happen. Peke picks him off. Get the inhibitor down. Super minions are in the base. Fnatic are gonna push for the win. And again, covering the wolves. That four members trying to kill the front line of Fnatic. They only got cyanide, and now unlimited he will die. And Fnatic doing so well. It's another kill for Peke and another win for Fnatic. They go 2-0 this week. It has been a great turnaround. And well, the Intel Extreme Master seems to have given a boost of confidence to Fnatic because they've taken down Copenhagen Wolves with ease. And we saw Cyanide on Class 6, completely taking out the Krogog Insect, building tanky, getting the Randuins, of course. Hex Ringer is one of the damage items, still provides some tankiness for him. And you just in the face of, of Covenant Wolves every single time, doing so well. And you've got to give it to Fnatic. Their rotation is oh, yeah, impeccable. On. The Baron was picked up by the Wolves, a great sneaky maneuver but they lost the inner turret. Then with the Baron, they lost another two inner turrets. They just were chasing Fnatic the whole way around the map. Every time Covenant Wolves tried to go for the Dragon, Fnatic just went elsewhere. Then when Covenant Wolves tried to move towards the bot lane or the top lane, Fnatic just pushed off the mid lane, always forced them to drop their plants, recall, and then try and defend all these lanes that they were just pushing off constantly. Source in the top lane, take it down in the bot lane, pushing, 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 and just it was so hard for Cobra and Wolves to actually do anything. Every time they had to flash ultimate from Unlimited, they tried to engage. But then they just weren't strong enough in the team fights compared to the Fnatic team. And huge credit to Soaz in that top lane. Didn't die on Shivana. Went 2 0 11. And I know he absolutely hates playing tanks, but by God, did he play it well. He kept drawing the entire team towards him while the rest of Fnatic picked up objectives. And then having a Shivana. Getting to the point where she can just push all the time, she's not afraid of dying to anyone, is where Fnatic really showed all, as well the tactic for them. Having him up in the top lane and just every single time, Cobra will send multiple members to stop him, push up the mid lane, push up the bot lane, just took a turret for something else. And again, we also have to highlight the combo, the disengage on Morgana and Lulu. Every time Cobra Wolves wanted a fight, Fnatic said, nope, we don't really want this one, just backed out. It happened two or three times in the mid game where Covering Wolves actually were in an advantage. An 8 0 3 reckless as well. That was got weird. himself a quadrant, nearly got the triple. Didn't quite get the penta. Scumbag Wolves didn't want to learn to have it. They just kept running away. Well, had a few issues in the laning phase, but then just continued farming afterwards. Mm. And then when it got to the team fights, he just landed everything. Like his ultimate this game, picking up the kill onto Amazing in the mid lane early on. And then we just saw him team fight after team fight, staying in the back, and then coming in later on to just clean up everything. So that was beautiful AD carry play. Yeah, and Peke just playing that utility Lulu. Didn't go First for the time. full damage. Got a, got a good few kills towards the end there, let's be fair. But he played full utility. He was constantly giving speed to Reckless, allowing Reckless to get those kills. I just love the fact he's actually playing Lulu now because it means for teams to have to consider the fact you can actually ban Lulu. Mm -hmm. In the past, people have been saying, well, we don't mind you playing Lulu top lane. We're just going to lane swap on you and it's fine enough to deal with it. And we, So we're not going to ban Lulu. Covering Wolves said the same here. Then instant first pick from Fnatic and you just put it mid lane. And it's so annoying to deal with Lulu. She, there's a reason everyone wants to ban her away. So where do we see the rankings now? Because there's starting to be a little bit of a gap now. We can start to see the top four developing and the bottom four developing. Where do we see these teams ranking out? We've only got two weeks left of the full season. Whenever Gambit decides to show up, I put them as one of the absolute best teams, of course. They have these games, though, where they don't really do anything and just end up losing. Mm. Alliance have been a lot more consistent lately, uh, lately on here. Fnatic been playing really well, so I will put them up here as well. SK Gaming, yes, they lost today, but still, been a fantastic team for the last five weeks, so we have to keep them also in the top. And then Rocket, they did win a game, but they've been losing quite a lot, so I will put them just slightly under the top four here, but top four, Gambit, Fnatic, Alliance, and of course SK Gaming. The order doesn't matter. And of course, when everybody wins in that top area, it means that everybody's tied again. <laughs> yeah, as always, European LCS.
So where, where do you go from this? Because obviously you were, you were in the crazy playoff that we had in the summer. How does it play as the team's coming into this one? You know, how does it play in your minds? The fact that we're going to reach that end goal. We may be in that top four, but we may actually have to have a playoff to stay in the top four. So what basically what should be going through your mind is we want to get to playoffs, and then we reset our mind. And we say now we're at playoffs, even though we're at a sixth seed, we still have every single chance of actually winning the whole thing because now it's the best out of three. You have, you have to play this one team in the quarterfinals, semifinals. Mm. Then you have one more game. And as soon as you are in the playoffs, everything can happen. Yes, we lost back in games come first when we actually had a chance to go to Worlds. We lost the game at 2-0. But still, had we won the first game all of a sudden, we just needed one more win actually and we would have been to Worlds. So that's how it goes. And it's how it is for these teams. Once you get to playoffs, reset your mind, you forget the season and you just think about this best out of three you have to play against this team. And of course, for these teams, it's all about getting to the All-Stars for the be representing Europe. We're going to be sending over to Jacques and Joe, who are ready to speak with Fnatic Soas. Thank you very much. We indeed have Soas here with us from Fnatic after our victory versus the Copenhagen Wolves. Crowd is cheering for you. You did amazing the last uh, two days, actually, this game again. Tell me what you guys wanted coming out of Picks and Bands. Um, we wanted pretty much what we had in the in the setup. I actually expected Youngbug to last pick top lane and Counter pick since like Renekton is probably the most viable charm, the, 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 the charm that you will blind pick on top lane. And he actually picked Renekton, so I knew what I was facing and I just went for Shivana. Uh, I was a, a bit scared of Eddie's Renekton diving me, but I managed to do fine. What about that laning phase? Because usually Renekton in the, in the first few levels is going to give you a hard time, but actually you stayed really, really even in CS there. Do you think, number one, how did you do in that lane? And do you think they made a mistake by not putting more pressure on you? Um, at some point, it took like one turret at level four or something, and I did EQ, and it was like mid HP, so you had to use spot. And after I just trade, Cyanide came, I got the assist even though I hit it like 10 seconds before. Cyanide killed him, I got, I got quite a bit of advantage here. And I managed to do equal after that in terms of CS and pressuring the lane. And then as the game went on, you of course do what top laners do, draw all the attention to you, our stuff was going on. But under the radar, Copenhagen Wolves all of a sudden did Baron. When did you guys realize that and that you made that mistake? Um, we actually knew at some point that they were doing Baron, but it, we thought that it was too late since we didn't have vision and we don't want it to go ward it because we were too far. So we just decided to push top and all the lanes and just leave Baron. What about the team fights themselves? Because it became quite apparent that the Wolves had unlimited starting everything off of them. Tibbers coming in there first and throwing everything afterwards. Remember the fight underneath the inner tower in mid lane where they burst down Peke before he could do anything about it. How worried were you that that was going to keep happening and that you know, as the game goes on, they can push through from one of those wins? Uh, I just kept telling Peke and Reckless to not stack together because if one of them get like one shot, it's fine. They use a lot for one shot, like they say Peke, get one shot and we managed to do fine on middle even though he didn't do anything for the whole fight. So at some point after this fight, we just told Reckless to push the turret alone. We put Morgana Black Shield on him. We put Lulu Shield and he just pushed alone. Final question as we broaden it out. As Fnatic seems to be on the up, how, how has your well-being been? Because we've heard you saying before, I don't really like this meta, I don't like it. It seems to be going better for you. Um, how are you feeling about it? Um, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the meta is still the same, even though we see some AP champions such as Ryze. Like, I'm not going to tell that Ryze is a skill champion, but... <laughs> Uh, like, we might see some more champion, like Wicked is playing Irelia quite a lot recently. So the, there is more boozers, there is more AP, so there is more champion. And there's gonna be more champion event coming, since this champion have counter events, so... The meta right now is actually better than before. <laughs> All right. At least on top lane. <laughs> so no more tears, except maybe on Rise. <laughs> Wow. So congratulations. Uh, so as two great victories from Fnatic here the last couple of days. And now we're going to get back over to D-Man and Officio to check out the standings. Thank you both. Here is the how the tables are stacking up after a week's worth of matches. In top place, it is a tie. Yay. 
Hey, what a surprise. Gamut and SK Gaming now with 13 wins and 9 losses. And look at that. Surprise, surprise. It's a three-way tie this time for third place with Alliance, Fnatic and Rocket all at 12 wins, 10 losses. But Alliance, let's not forget, are on a six-game win streak. Then we have Copenhagen Wolves with 10 wins and 12 losses, followed up, of course, by Subotko in the seventh place with 9 wins and 13 losses. And down in the bottom, still trying to chase the playoff spot, we have Millennium, eighth place, of course, with 7 wins and 15 losses. Yeah, starting to sink away there. We'd also like to take a moment and highlight our five OP players who have played exceptionally well this week. In the top lane, you just heard from him. It is Soaz. Massive performance from him, 26 KDA in the two games of Shivana. And well, the last game, he was phenomenal. He was absolutely fantastic. Doing so well in the laning phase, keeping up in farm against the Renekton, getting all the items he needed and just started split pushing. It was just a constant pain to deal with. And of course, in the jungle, it is Shook. 69% kill participation across the two games this week. And he also had eight kill spree in that last game, despite the poor start he had. He had a poor start, but he just pulled it together. And his ultimates, his team fights were absolutely perfect on Evelyn. And his synergy with Froggen is so strong and so hard to deal with. And the mid lane man, we just saw him in action. It is Peke. Had a fantastic first day. Went 11-2-3 and three on Gragas versus Rocket. And then now he's playing Lulu in the mid lane. Very good pickup for him, finally. And the fact that he's now making plays or trying to make plays is one of the reasons Fnatic are doing so well at the moment. Yeah, you're starting to see the confidence back exactly. in his eyes. Tabs, he is the AD carry for us. He went 9-1-17 over two games. Fantastic performance by the AD carry for Alliance. And we just have to highlight the way Alliance played yesterday with this Siri on Tabs. His ultimates, every single team fight around the dragon, he just popped it, caught a member from Gambit and got ahead and then of course his Jinx play. He was the main damage dealer staying in the back and just did so well in the entire game. And of course runner up for that one was of course Reckless. Yeah we have to highlight zero three on that Lucian. Of course the support well it's another member of Alliance it is Nif. He was involved in 28 of the 42 kills in those two games. His Thresh was off the chain and he busted out a first time Nami to defeat Gambit. He had a very good Nami yesterday and of course he's fresh today in the team fights when he landed like five hooks in a row. He was so strong. Of course, we have to mention Edward. His play today as well on Fresh was absolutely fantastic. But Nif, similar also with his Nami game from yesterday, will get the OP player Played for well supports. both days. But one player, well, he stood out above the rest and has earned himself title of most valuable player of Week 9, picking up his second MVP title of this spring split. It is, of course, Alliance's Froggen. Froggen is just in the mid lane at the moment. He's one of the best, if not the best mid laner we have in Europe. His Kale, his Gragas was spot on this weekend. 7.75 KD, of course. And just the fact that he's so good now, he's even roaming around the map here. As long as he gets ahead, he would just do so much to, against your team. And it's so hard to shut down because he's such a good laner and his champion pool. How do you ban out Froggen when he even plays like Karthus and everything? Anything you want, and of course, we do have a clip of Froggen in action goes against the Super Hawk crew. It's a fantastic play. Explosive cast just decimates Selfie where he stands. He's going for a second. He's going to have to repel straight back on this one. Has he got the rock? Beautiful. He does. And Gragas manages to get two kills. And of course, it, it was the double kill. It got him going. It was the rotations he made. And we were talking about this throughout the last two games. The fact that he was starting to do those rotations. This is Froggen. He used to just sit in the mid lane of farm, but he is now all over the map. Well, we have to say, of course, in the very first weeks of the LCS, it was kind of the style of Froggen, but he's really improved it in the last five, six weeks. He's been doing so well when it comes to punishing his lane. If he gets ahead, then he can roam around. That's what he's been doing so well. And the fact he can come up here, and just the beautiful thing about the replay is the fact he shoots Rise into the turret again, still with the aggro from it, so he just dies in the air from the turret, of course. And I was me worried how he'd be being with us for a week in Canavita, but he turned out fantastic once again. Remember that the North American LCS will be resuming tomorrow, and they'll be starting the day with some belters. It is going to be Team Solo mid up against XDG. That will be followed by Curse versus Dignitas. Then we have Coast taking on Cloud9, and of course EG with the free subs will be playing CLG. And those matches, they start on Saturday at 8 p.m. Central European time, which is 12 noon Pacific. And then we'll be returning with the European LCS next Thursday, starting out with Millennium facing off against the Copenhagen Wolves. That will be followed by the top tie, SK Gaming versus Gambit.
Then we have Rocket taking on Alliance, and then we have Super Hot Crew against Fnatic. Let's see if Super Hot Crew can keep up the aggression. And you'll be able to find us here for those games on Thursday, March 27th at 7 p.m. Central European time, and that is 11 a.m. Pacific. But right now, the action is going to continue as Ninjas in Pajamas are facing off against Reason Gaming in their best of three for the European Challenger Series semifinals. Freak and Zyrene, are you standing by to take you right into those games? And without further ado, over to you.